So if you think intubation is very important, raise your hand. Intubation. If you think ventilation is more important, raise your hand. Okay, why? That's the correct answer. Democracy is a good thing today. Why? Okay, so uh, intubation is not the only way to ventilate a patient. And what else? The purpose of intubation. Sorry? Okay. Let's go. 
will not fit. So learning scope is out. Okay, that's the reason. There is one T and G, but what's management? So T, learning scope is out. So what other information that are very useful for information? Sorry? So you could you think of using the nodes. Then as we'll come in few minutes, how many options you have to manage difficult airway? Maybe 25, 26 options. Okay? So you need to know which of the 25 options are out. Lergoscope is out. Fiber optic is it out or in? In. Retromolar is it out or in? What about MMA, laryngeal mask airway? Out, raise your hand. Yalla, Rudy. And fast track, RPM fast track, a rigid uh, LMA, fast track. Of course, LMA, that's a tricky question. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm testing you before lunch, you know, that's very unfair. Because there are six different types of LMA. Okay? Not all LMAs are LMAs. There is rigid and soft. The soft ones that are compressible, you could pass it even down to 2.7 millimeter. The ones that are hard, like the fast track for intubation, is not flexible. So it does not go. That was a trick question. But uh, mashallah, you're awake. By the way, I am an anesthetist. So if you fall asleep at any time, that's okay. That's part of my job. <laughs> Okay, so don't feel embarrassed. If you had a good lunch, feel free, okay? And uh, of course, if you snore, the fiber optic is here, we'll have a candidate, so feel safe, okay? So examination, other features for difficult airway. Uh, then the neck movements. This is the laryngoscopic view. This is, you know the nickname for this? Malambati scoring. And then this is the laryngoscopic view. Is this something useful? Very useful. Okay. Yes. Raise your hand. No. Raise your hand. Okay. It's yes or no. So if it's class one, it's very predictive of easy intubation. The laryngoscopy will be very easy. If it's class four, it's very difficult. It's very useful. But if it's intermediate, if it's malapathy 2 or 3, it's very useless. Because if malapathy is intermediate like this, the patient could have type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, or stage 1, stage 2, stage 2, laryngoscopic view. So in extreme cases, it's very useful. In borderline cases, it's useless. So it's yes and no. There are a lot of scoring systems in the literature, and you could just add scores. I don't really care about that. This is the old ASA difficult airway algorithm. This is the first one, okay? How many steps in this, how many major steps? One, two, three. And there is a small box and then big box. And step number one, how many sub steps? This is an eye examination. In ICU you have a very good eye, so this is a part of your eye exam. If you can't read this very clear, you know. <laughs> so how many steps in number one? Three. Three, okay. So this is the new algorithm. So how many steps overall? Four. How many steps in number one? Four. Okay, so it's four and four. Now, what did they add it? Okay, we'll go over them all in details, okay? So the first thing, assess the likelihood, you need to differentiate between the four steps. Is it difficult intubation, difficult ventilation, difficult consent or cooperation, difficult with tracheostomy? Because we know this is what they added. Because some patients, it's very difficult, even tracheostomy. Because before when we say, okay, difficult airway, they say just get an eye. You know, like if you talk to surgeon, they say, like this. Remember the latest case that was in the news in Saudi Arabia, the doctor who died in Jeddah, private, one of the private hospitals? What did they do when he, it was difficult? Did they do tracheostomy? It did not even come on their mind. They just, the patient died in front of them and they did not even think. So this is not a joke. You need to consider the four options before we start. That's number one. Okay, everybody knows about the case. It's a difficult airway, doctor died and the hospital was closed, 18 million legitation against the doctor.
doctors, of course, everybody who is involved in the team is out of business because this is no joke. ICU, uh, anesthesia, surgeons, they're, and the hospital is out of business. So this is no joke. This is the second one that is very important. Step number two, actively pursue opportunities to deliver supplemental oxygen throughout the procedure. You will see with intubations, once the doctor is intubating, everybody else doing something useless. Somebody needs to hold oxygen against the patient face. That will improve and decrease the chances of desaturation. That's a very critical step. You, somebody of the team, either the doctor or the senior or the RT who's intubating, need either to instruct somebody to give oxygen or to somebody else to do it. But this is a very important part of the management, to keep oxygen near by the patient face. Then we have to ask, should we go for awake intubation or we induce anesthesia or go to non-invasive airway management or invasive airway management and then we could go either spontaneous ventilation or we stop spontaneous ventilation. Should we, where should we go? What is the safest, first column or second column for difficult airway cases? Should we go here or here? Okay, democracy, another democracy. Sorry? No, there is no question, but we need answer. So, where should we go, here or here? Okay, first column, raise your hand. Second column, raise your hands. And everybody say we win, we want democracy, ladies want to vote, and when we ask them to vote, nobody votes. Okay? We'll repeat. I need to see all hands moving. Even if you sleep, the person next to you, please raise his hand. Okay? Because I need to know, you can't be on the side, you can't be in the middle. This is difficult airway, you need to take sides, okay? So if you're here, raise your hand. If you're here, raise your hand. Still, there's some, a lot of people sleeping, nobody. But the problem is the sleeping people together. So there's, we need to maintain here. Awake intubation without the abolition of muscle, uh, muscle power and without non-invasive because the key is that if you induce anesthesia, the patient is not breathing, you have only five minutes to secure the airway. If the patient is awake and with this continuous breathing, you could practice or do your awake intubation or intubation in five, 10, 15, 30 minutes. You have a lot of time and time is very important, you know, like that oxygen thing that, you know, brain anoxia, the, the, the scary things. So it is a big difference. You need to start to column one, awake intubation with non-invasive technique and without abolition of spontaneous ventilation. Then the first option here, so this is, as we mentioned, difficult ventilation, difficult intubation, difficult with the patient cooperation or consent, or difficult with tracheostomy. Just repeat the first few slides and then of non-surgical airway, spontaneous ventilation, and awake intubation as a preferred choices. This is number one choice because it will give you a lot of time. Then the first thing, if it's predicted difficult intubation, we do away fiber optic intubation. If it's successful, confirm the tube placement. If it's failed, if it's failed, either we cancel the case or consider of other options or surgical airway. If we think from the start, it's very impossible to do for the, for example, one of the patients, uh, we've had very huge tongue. We've tried, there's no airway. We just did away trachestomies, which is a solution. Those are the options, uh, mask, uh, local anesthesia, intubation attempt after, like if the patient is uncovered, you think it's borderline, but the patient is uncooperative, you could induce anesthesia. That would be second, especially if you pushed. Of course, this might not be option in the ICU. You cannot cancel cases in ICU. 
So this is only in anesthesia or semi-elective cases. So when do we be in these cases? You know, difficult airway, anesthesia. We could be there from three rows. We did not know it is difficult. We just gave muscle relaxant and then it turned to be difficult. Or sometimes even in the best assessment you might be sometimes brushed and experienced your assistance, your bad luck, you did do something wrong to your mother, to your wife, to your somebody died. It happens. It happened to any it could happen, okay? So unanticipated difficult airway, you just can't say I could prevent it. Or the patient is uncooperative and they will not cooperate. Mentally retarded, hypoxic, car accident. So if intubation is successful for the first intubation, you celebrate everything is okay. If it failed, what should you do? If your initial intubation failed, what should you do? So oxygenate, try to ventilate. So if you try to ventilate and it did not work, like what? Uh, could you please, just for the time, raise your hand and say yes, you, you saw it, okay? Call for help, okay? LMA, raise your mask away. Take a deep breath and think what you Okay, take a deep breath and then hope the patient will take a deep breath, but that's very important, <laughs> yes. Yes, you have to keep your head up, okay? What else? Sorry? My son. Video assess what? So now we said you try to intubate and you could not. Then you go to do mask ventilation. Okay? So if mask ventilation is successful, you go to the green zone. If the mask ventilation is not successful, you go to the red zone. So cannot intubate, cannot ventilate. That's the red zone. If you can't intubate, then can ventilate, it's the green zone. Okay? So the first thing, okay, let's just go back in a slow motion. You try to intubate and you cannot. And now you want to ventilate and you go not with the face mask. What should you do? I just want to know your answers for ventilation. LMA, that's number six. What else? That's number 20. Tracheostomy number 20. Sorry? I'm saying for ventilation. Bougie, that's number 72. Now I'm saying about ventilation. Because we said patient will not die because of intubation. Patient will die because of ventilation. Cricothyroidotomy, uh, that's number two, 20. I want number 2, number 3, number 4. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Adjust patient head. Reposition the mask. Airway, oral airway. Nasal airway after decongestant. Right, what else? Sorry? Not a bad day. Okay? Two hand ventilation. Two people ventilation. Those are all important steps. Okay? You have to do this. Okay? These are five or six steps. And you need to have these ahead of time. If you don't have it, we'll, we'll come to the options, okay? So the, what, what are the options if you can't intubate and cannot ventilate? What should you do first? Two hand, airway, nasal airway, and then you consider LMA and other things, okay? If it fails. Okay, so you cannot intubate and you could ventilate. What should you do now for the intubation? What are the options for intubation? Now, I could not intubate first time, but ventilation is okay. So what are the options? Laryngeal mask, that's number four. Another trial, the same way. This is the most single step. The only, the most strong step is to persist to intubate with the same technique. You have to change something. A lot of cases, patients die, because they cannot intubate and then you, they can't ventilate and they, they go the second time, they won't intubate the same way. Then the ventilation becomes
become difficult and then they go the third time and then the patient dies. And then start the India movie. You know? I mean or the Kogoy movie or Darakola or whatever. A bad movie. Okay? Scary movie. So this is very important. Cannot intubate, can't ventilate, you do not go again and do the same step. So we've talked about options now. You need to intubate different ways. And now we're talking about the different ways. What are these different ways? So we said we could intubate through LMA, fiber-optic intubation, fast track. Cobra, Cobra, Glidoscope, what else? What are other options? Covid tube, CMAC, this is number 20. CMAC. What else? Where are the nurses? They're beating you here. Where are the, mm -hmm. Wake up. I'm saying about intubation now. McCoy. You know McCoy? This is a laryngoscope with moving tip. Okay. What else? Retrograde intubation. What else? located 
If I have difficult airway, can't intubate, can't ventilate, I will use this and this and this and this. And then the specific features that make this equipment right in this case. Okay, what is the feature of the equipment and where should? If you don't have these four conditions, any option is not your option. It's something for the workshop, something to, to be nice, to be smart during rounds. It will not be option for you. So you have to have these four options for options to work here. You have to have it. You have to know the indications and contraindications. You need to be proficient and you have to have it available and in your brain to be recalled at the right time. Is that clear? Okay. So after multiple attempts, so we said here you have to try one of the alternative approach to intubation. Sorry, um, so this is not emergency pathway, this is the emergency pathway, can't intubate, can't ventilate. This is the non-emergency pathway, so you have to use alternative intubations. If at any time mass ventilation becomes difficult, you could put LMA and that could transfer between the red and the green zone in the difficult airway algorithm. Those are the options if it either surgical airway, under anesthesia, or awaken the patients. So those are the options that we've talked about. Again, what make an option, as we said here, only nine or six options, but usually the options are so many, you just need to know them ahead of time. So this is the emergency pathway, so call for help. So what happens if you can't intubate and can't ventilate? What's the usual thing that happens to people? Panic. Yes, panic. And what after panic? to ask yourself, if you're a doctor, why I did not go to dermatology? If you're a nurse, what about outpatient nursing? If you are uh, technicians, I mean, what about the orthopedic? You know, who, who is the person who pushed me into this specialty? And then make special prayer for them? Okay, so, yeah. Okay, you're allowed to do that for two microseconds in your brain without anybody knowing. Because if you go in that mode and continue, the patient will die. <laughs> so what you need to do, panic inside your heart, but in front of everybody, stay collected and calm. It's like you're praying to somebody, you know. It's just, uh, unless you do that, believe me, the patient will die. But you, it's normal to panic. It's normal, and then say, okay, what are the options? What could I do smart here to take the patient and me out of trouble? Okay? Because if you continue on that thinking, the patient will be in trouble. Sorry? Yeah, so you could do that in two microseconds. And of course, you could just come later, call that person and say, okay, why you push me here? You know? <laughs> Who pushed me? You could do that later, but this time, no. You consider about the options. So what are the options to improve ventilation at this time? We should open the airway. Open the airway by the 6-5 tools. And the other option that these times, very specifically LMA and oxygen. Is oxygenation and ventilation the same? What is more important? That's not, does not count. You could fool me, but not this time. You know, after six o'clock or three o'clock in the morning, I could be fooled, but not during the middle of the day. Okay, who thinks ventilation is, and ventilation is more important? Raise your hand. Oxygenation is more important? Raise your hand. It's two different things. It's two different things. More important, democracy did not win this time. It's the only time, okay? We have to call look at that here. Zanga zanga. We are in deep zanga zanga, okay? Because patients, we know that the difference between oxygenation and ventilation is with ventilation is oxygenation and CO2 elimination. We know that patients tolerate and survive high CO2, but nobody could tolerate low oxygen. So, as we started before, oxygenation is way more important than ventilation. Ventilation is way more important than intubation. Is that clear? 
and the three is important. So at this time, the priority is to maintain ventilation, uh, sorry, oxygenation, and that could be done with the techniques to improve face mask ventilation, LMA, combi tube, and transtracheal jet ventilation. Okay, cricothyroidotomy and jet ventilation. Those are here for oxygenation. And then we could uh, uh, try some other tra transtracheal jet ventilation, laryngeal mask ventilation, and combi tube. It's a visual, you know combi tube, everybody knows combi tube. Like, 
what are the steps for ventilation? If you put the face mask, mask, mask face, the chest is not moving. What should you do? Oral airway. If it's not, you double check the size of the oral airway. If not, put nasal decongested and put nasal airway. If that's still not working, you put two hands to open the airway and then ask somebody to ventilate. If that does not work, sometime in anesthesia, and we've seen these cases, even with long experience, you need two people to hold the mask and somebody else to ventilate. So those are deliberate five or six or seven steps just to optimize ventilation. If that did not work, you could consider laryngeal mask airway or combi tube, or you could do needle cricketer at the Anesthesia 
yeah, to the Pyrofoam Fossa. So we go with a care forceps, talk to the patient, ask them to stick their tongue out, see that the patient have oxygen in between, that's step two. So the patient have oxygen already installed or uh, already fixed to their shin. And we go with the, this cotton to the pyrofoam fossa that will provide anesthesia for upper airway down to the focal cord. Sorry? 2%. Zalucan gel, anything you have on the table. Sorry? Not focal cord. I go to the nerve supply. The nerve supply comes from the side of the larynx from, from the pharynx, go inside and then go under the mucosa. So I go from inside on the mucosa and that will anesthetize the terminal nerves. I don't see, it's, it's just care feature, okay? So we do this two times in each side. The first time the patient cough, the second and the third time the patient will not cough. Okay, so that's pyrofoam fossa block. And then we go with the fibro-optic, of course, for the nasal intubation, first we go through the nose, and then we go with the fibro-optic. And before we go through the focal cords, we inject local anesthesia through the fibro-optic itself. Is that clear? So we anesthetize the area after the cord through the fibro-optic, under direct vision. So if we see the cord, we just put some local anesthesia. So we took, we take the nasal airway, the dilator. Yes, yes. This is, this patient, I'm doing this for him the second time. So he's a frequent flyer, he has a forsan with us. Sorry? Uh, this is routine, I could show you 20 or 20 uh, intubation is the same amount. It's if you are competent, if you are comfortable with it, that communicate to the patient. If you talk to the patient, if you listen to what I was talking to him, I was telling you know, of course I'm giving him a little bit of midazolam, just a touch, you know, like two milligram, and then you know, talking to him. If you voice is calm to the patient, and you speak to them step by step, they will not be scared. But if you talk.
place. We inflate the cup, ask the patient to breathe. We listen, make sure the tube in good position. We just wanted to also to test to see the patient is cooperative, not cooperative.
if you don't have papra optic, what could you do for this case? So the same thing, you know, like if you do this, if you do this and attach the CO2 port, you don't need the fiber optic actually. The fiber optic is just for, you know, like it make it easier. But once the patient, once you push through the nose, once you are in the hypopharynx, you could just move the neck. There are nine options to move the neck. There is no more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three in the middle. You know, because if you think about the skull, if the no, if the tube is pushed through the nose and coming from the nasopharynx, what is moving the tube towards the larynx is the skull. My, if the nose, if the tube is coming from the nose to the nasopharynx, what moves the tube to go to the esophagus or the oral airway or the nasal, sorry, the larynx is the position of the skull. You use the skull to guide. So if you use like this and push it and there is no CO2, you know you're in the esophagus, so you change the angle of the head and then push again gently, never push anything forcefully. Okay, we'll stop here. If you have questions or if you want to practice with these skills for the coming few minutes, we're here. Thank you very much for coming and I hope